God created Adam and Eve and they lived very long lives. Adam lived 930 years. It is because the earth of Adam's days had a water canopy surrounding it thereby protecting the earth from the direct influence of the sun's harmful rays. Archaeological evidence to this phenomena is found in the Sumerian King's List. The King's List mentions about kings that lived 24,000 years and so on before the great flood of Noah. 24,000 years of lifespan? Yes, but it is a different system of counting. When Adam was 874 years, in his ninth generation, Lamech was born. When Lamech was 182 years old, God gave him a son named Noah. The great flood which wiped out every living being on the face of the earth occurred when Noah was 600 years old. So this places Noah's flood at 1656 years from the creation of Adam. God made a prophecy in the Garden of Eden when the serpent deceived Adam and Eve. He said to the old serpent, the devil, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So the devil tried to mix up human seed. In the days prior to Noah's flood, angels mixed up with the humans and brought forth giants. When this angelic breed of giants started mixing with the human race, it became evident that there won't be any human seed left that is pure enough to bruise the devil's head and fulfill God's prophecy. That wasn't all. The book of the giants tells us that the fallen angels engaged in miscegenation with the animals, reptiles, birds and even fish. The outcome was a bizarre accidental breed of demigods and dinosaurs. Even today, one can clearly see the mixed features of animals, reptiles and birds on dinosaur fossils. God used Noah's flood to wipe them all out. They all died on the same layer of time. That is why these fossils are almost always found in the surface of the earth. If they had perished millions of years ago, probably one will have to dig deeper to find them. This is also the time in the history when God reduced the lifespan of human beings from 1000 years to 120 in order to limit any damage one could cause on this earth during his or her lifetime. Only Noah and his family found grace in God's sight to escape the flood and replenish the earth once again. This explains the complex situations in which God wiped out every living being off the face of the earth to start all over again. After the flood, Noah's grandson Canaan read some inscriptions on a rock from the pre-flood times and started following the ways of the fallen angel. This corrupted his whole family. His nephew was Nimrod who built walled cities, protected his people from the wild beasts and other enemies. However, he was very ungodly and he was murdered for that reason. After his death, his wife Semiramis told the people that Nimrod has ascended to heaven and has become the sun god. Later, when she became pregnant illegitimately, she claimed that the sun god Nimrod himself impregnated her through his rays. She also asserted that she was the mother goddess whose seed would crush the devil's head as God had prophesied in the Garden of Eden. And thus, her illegitimate son Tammuz became the false savior of the pagan world. During her reign, Semiramis started building the Tower of Babel in order to worship and give sacrifices to Nimrod. A spirit of a dead person being deified as God himself, thus challenging God's authority as the creator. God confounded her and her people by confusing their language. Unable to communicate with each other, they abandoned their project, dispersed and established different civilizations. However, the worship of Nimrod, Semiramis and Tammuz continued wherever people settled. 
widely with different names because the great confusion had changed even their names. Meanwhile, humans were also mixing with the fallen angels once again. Giants were born even after the flood. God was going to choose his own people and preserve them in order for the woman to see Jesus Christ to crush the devil's head and set the human race free from the power of death and hell. In the year 1984 BC, God spoke to Abraham in Haran, which is in the southeastern part of modern Turkey. He blessed him, saying that in him all the families of the earth were going to be blessed, meaning in his seed line was the savior of the whole world, Jesus Christ would be born. He also promised Abraham that he will give his descendants the land of Canaan. Now, Abraham had a son named Isaac. Isaac's son was Jacob. Jacob's youngest son Joseph ended up in Egypt as a slave. But God was with him and he raised him to be the most powerful man in Egypt after Pharaoh. Later, when his family moved to Egypt with him, Pharaoh gave them the fertile land of Goshen to live in. However, the kings that followed enslaved Jacob's descendants who are also known as the Israelites. This slavery in Egypt lasted for 400 years. Finally, the cries of the children of Israel came up unto God Almighty. He remembered his covenant with Abraham and sent Moses to deliver them from the bondage of Egypt. Moses told Pharaoh to release the children of Israel and let them go. The Pharaoh simply wouldn't. So God afflicted the Egyptians hard with plagues and pestilence and darkness and death that Pharaoh himself lost his firstborn son to God's fury. He finally let the Israelites go. 430 years after they arrived in Egypt, Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt as free men and women and they marched on toward the promised land of Canaan. In a final attempt, Pharaoh decided to pursue the Israelites and recapture them once again near the shores of Red Sea. God divided the Red Sea and let his children pass through it as if it were a dry ground. When the Pharaoh and his army drove in, the waters caved in and they all perished. Their chariot wheels and axles lay strewn around deep under the water even today at the point where they pursued the children of Israel. As the children of Israel journeyed on, God's presence went before them as a cloud during the day and as a pillar of fire at night. Now, the promised land of Canaan was made up of seven strong nations consisting of Amorites, Canaanites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, Girgashites and Jebusites. As the name implies, Canaanites were the descendants of Noah's grandson Canaan and they were actually giants for a certain reason. Israelites were no match to take on them at all. However, God did mighty miracles and delivered them all into the hands of the Israelites. God had commanded the Israelites to utterly destroy all that were in those cities, both men and women, young and old, and oxen and sheep with the edge of the sword. But why? Why would a loving God order such killing and destruction?